Deer Creek Audio, your trusted technical resource. This video will show you how to use Mini DSP Device Console, REW, or Dirac Live to achieve the subwoofer sound you always knew was possible. Properly integrating a subwoofer into your stereo system is one of the most powerful ways to increase clarity, imaging, dynamics, and all the attributes audiophiles associate with a high-fidelity, full-range system. Using a Mini DSP 2x4 HD, Flex, or SHD, you can integrate and tune a subwoofer into your 2.1 or 2.2 system and enjoy an enhanced listening experience. Subwoofer integration includes the tasks of optimizing speaker levels, crossovers, and delay settings. Once these tasks are accomplished, the results are seamless integration of the deep bass response, improved clarity and power handling of full range speakers, optimization of audio accuracy and dynamic range. Finding the best subwoofer configuration will depend on your system setup. If you are building a 2.1 system, your subwoofer will need to be driven monorally. If you are building a 2.2 system, you have the choice of a pair of monoralized subwoofers or stereo subwoofers associated with the full range speakers. A 2.2 monoral setup can be beneficial in cases where aesthetics dictate the location of the subwoofers, or when the full range speakers have large subwoofers, or a 2.2 stereo subwoofer system would be used when the subwoofers are located in close proximity to the full range speakers. Following are measurement and room correction hardware configurations for the Mini DSP 2x4 HD, Flex, and SHD series. You'll need to select the proper USB cables to allow for convenient access to the device console computer and for the microphone to move freely around the listening measurement area. Be sure that all of the subwoofer cables are shielded, low loss, of adequate length, and securely connected. This image shows a typical 2.2 setup for measurement and room correction. A 2.1 system with a single subwoofer will use channel 3 configured as a monaural output. Be sure to check that the crossover, phase, gain, equalization, and power mode of your subwoofers are either bypassed or set to nominal. This chart shows how your subwoofers should be set, so as to not interfere with the parameters that will be set up in the Mini DSP device console. Generally, subwoofers can be placed against the rear wall beside the main with the full range speakers pulled out for imaging purposes. Before proceeding with tuning, it's a good idea to experiment with various subwoofer positions and orientations, depending on aesthetic and room limitations. By using REW, you can see in real time the effects of the changes in position. Regardless of where the subwoofers end up, their location can be compensated for in either a 2.1 or 2.2 system by adjusting the relative amplitude and or delay between the various speakers. Using Mini DSP Device Console, you will configure the routing matrix, crossovers, relative levels, and delay settings for your system. For a 2.1 system, your subwoofer will need to be driven monorally using output channel 3. Typically, channel 1 is used for left and channel 2 is used for right full range speakers. You also have the opportunity in the routing matrix to adjust relative channel levels, as shown in the highlighted boxes. A 2.2 dual monaural setup can be beneficial in cases where aesthetics dictate non symmetrical locations or when the full range speakers have large woofers. An added benefit of monaural subwoofers is the ability to cancel out of room modes that otherwise might be present in the stereo setup. A 2.2 stereo setup would be used when the subwoofers are located in close proximity to the full range speakers. This is also the preferred method with subwoofers that have higher, 100 Hz or greater, crossover frequencies, or were designed for direct placement underneath full range speakers. It is a good practice to have the time of arrival of the audio signals from the full range speakers and subwoofers coincident. It's typical to see a few milliseconds of delay on the subwoofers due to DSP processing and since they are often placed back against the wall. To learn more on how to make delay measurements, check out our video on using delay settings to integrate your audio system. Determining the most effective crossover between the main speakers and subwoofers is key to good system design. 
Next, we explore how various filter types and slopes can produce enhanced results. A common crossover is the symmetrical 80 Hz Butterworth 24 dB per octave. This next example is for a crossover between a 12-inch full-range speaker and a high-powered 15-inch subwoofer. What's notable is the soft high-pass slope for the mains and sharper low-pass slope for the subwoofer. The soft high-pass helps to eliminate low bass room modes. You can find polarity issues using REW and your mini DSP's device console. By inverting the full-range speakers and subwoofers relative to one another, you can observe dips in the crossover region. Here, the subwoofer is inverted, which reveals a significant dip around the crossover frequency. The same thing can be done with the main speakers to determine if they are subtracting or adding to one another. Generally, the polarity is correct when the levels are additive. Next, adjust the relative levels of all speakers and subwoofers using REW and a mini DSP UMIK. From the central listening area, adjust the relative levels to be equal. You can increase the accuracy of this measurement by moving the microphone around to several locations and averaging the results. Now is a good time to further experiment with the crossover frequencies. You can try different crossover frequency points by underlapping and overlapping crossovers and varying slopes with both symmetrical and asymmetrical combinations. You should do this while listening to the results and verifying with REW. With some experimentation, you will be able to get a subwoofer integration that allows you to enjoy the last octave without the sense of having a subwoofer in the room. Then, when you run REW or Dirac Live, you will have truly optimal results. Before you begin your REW room correction project, be sure you have completed all of the basic setup steps we've just covered. After using the REW EQ tool to create an inverse filter, simply load the filter into your mini DSP unit and it will provide automatic correction. Please refer to the REW instruction guides for more on the process of making room correction measurements. Before you begin your first Dirac Live project, be sure you have completed all of the basic setup steps we've just covered. You'll also need to remove any parametric equalization you may have added. Be sure to retain the routing matrix, crossovers, channel levels, and delay settings. For a detailed description of the process, check out the Dirac Live user manuals. Be sure to visit us at DeerCreekAudio.com for more resources, tech blogs, and product details. Keep watching our YouTube channel for more video releases. <laughs>